let's go through some principles of layout. This would simulate my bottom plate. We have joists and the joist stack. Well, pretty much. This guy we pulled off layout to make future insulation easier. So let's go over really quickly layout. So as you can see, we're 16 on center. If I was to mark 16 inch, that would allow my full sheet of subfloor or wall sheathing, if I stack vertically, if I go horizontal, it'd be eight foot, to fully cover the end and center on my joist. So here is the, here is the principle. If I go center, I just have to offset the thickness of whatever my joist is. So this is an inch and three quarters. Here's about center. If it's inch and three quarters, then half of that is seven eighths. So see how that's center? There would be my seven eighths back from center. I would go X that way. That would now be the edge of the member, but still allow our sheathing to be centered. That's if it's inch and three quarter. Now this section here is all two and I think five sixteenths, two and three eighths. It's a higher series Roseburg joist. I think it's a 70 series. So same thing, there's center. If I go center on four foot, then I would just go half of that back. See the difference there? Let's just exaggerate this since I brought up a whole bunch of wood. Now, if you're using dimensional, it's the same thing. This is inch and a half. Half of that is three quarters. And so we would go 48 minus three quarters. Again, centered. So you see how each of these, the side of the member, in this case a joist, is just a little different depending on its thickness. Now let's imagine that it was a four by. That's three and a half wide, so half is inch and three quarters, centered. But now we would measure inch and three quarters, we would mark that. Let's just go one bigger, because I got this piece of rigid lamb. You notice it's three inch and three quarters that are, have been glued together. It is five and a quarter, so we would go half of that. And now we would mark over here. So let me show you how that works. Now, once we have this layout and we know what our joists are, I can hook this edge and I can mark 16 X that way. But for each member, that's going to move, right? In this case, we have these, what are they? Two and five sixteenths. So that's how we did this down below, is you have center of the stud back three quarters. Where this joist is, center of the joist, back one half, and that would put the mark here. That keeps all of our load path aligned. This is where layout should be, about here. You notice we just went two feet, X back. What this allows us to do is when we go and frame an additional wall that touches that foam, when that comes all the way up, we need to be able to get insulation in here later. So that's why this space is bigger. But this space doesn't matter. It's not an issue as far as comfort or durability or structural. It's not a structural issue because the Advantech subfloor is rated to go two feet. And really, we're less than that from edge of member to edge of member. Now, when we lay out upstairs, we would just simply go 15 and a quarter, 31 and a quarter, and see, 48 and a quarter. That, again, puts us right at center doesn't matter that our stud is inch and a half. Now let's just draw that. So there's our stud. Underneath that stud, that's what it looks like. Again, everything, the centers line up all the way through the building. And then as each member gets wider or narrower, that's where the sides change. But the center never changes. If I shift that off. If I'm very careful. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so pulling from the outside, that allows our sheet to fully cover. We don't want it to split. We want it to fully cover. So 32 is center. I offset each way for my stud thickness. If I had a five and a quarter, there's center. If I have this joist, there's center. Smaller joist center smaller joist center. So I don't, <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. Centers stay the same, 
sides offset based on thickness. Okay, I have a five and a half inch wall that is standard height. My garage is lower. I want my layout to start from butting that taller wall. I'm gonna have a joist there and I want my sheathing to break at the center. Center of my joist is at one foot and then two foot, three foot, four foot, plus seven eighths minus seven eighths because it's an inch and three quarters wide. And that way, center of joist is consistent. Now I'm just gonna mark every foot plus an inch and three quarters. So two foot, two foot, one and three quarters, three foot, three foot, one and three quarters, four foot, four foot, one and three quarters. And I'm just gonna keep moving my tape. I do not have it pinned down there and I'll show you. We can be accurate. Six foot, one and three quarters, seven foot, one and three quarters, eight foot, one and three quarters, nine foot. Seven foot, one and three quarters, 15, one and three quarters. Owned the last one. Okay, so I'm gonna lock my tape. I don't need to tack a nail. Look at that, that is right on the money. So let's show how this works when it comes to actually laying the subfloor. You can see Gage in the background is putting down some glue. I'm grabbing a sheet of Advantec. This is three quarter inch Advantec. Weighs about 75 pounds, by the way. Now you'll notice I'm gonna fully cover the rim and I am centered on that joist. Well, I mean, that's what we wanted. And you can see the seam in the foreground is also centered on a joist, but it is staggered four feet. The proper way to lay subfloor, at least in our engineering and according to the APA, is if you start with an eight on the end, then your next row is a four. And that's exactly what you can see behind me. Now, subfloor is a whole different video. Make sure that you gap the panels an eighth of an inch but as long as we're centered over those joists, then even on interior layout, we can just use those seams to start our layout. And I will show you that in a future video. This isn't rocket surgery, as our engineer says, but it is something I have messed up many times. So you notice as I'm laying the glue on top of the uh, eye joist, watch my foot. I'm coming up on a seam. Notice that that seam is dead center. That's what we want. Also remember that the panels are sized for spacing, so they're just a little bit less than eight feet. Here we have window, windows, windows. Nothing but studs. Now, let's kick it up a notch, Emerald. Instead of side marks to our joists or our studs, like we showed previously in the video, I'm using the Bigfoot Tools layout stick my other layout okay. stick I've had so since 2005 or six. This is the new adjustable one. You can see I've got, got it set up for 24 centers. Okay, I like to lay out centers for my studs. Why? I will show you that hey, in just a moment. <laughs> Basically, it's so that I can center the sheets. That's right on there. Now, as I mark, notice that over. I'm not accumulating any error. And basically, this is just a jig. It's set up for 24 on center. So, Remember right. that a side mark to side mark is the same as a center to center. Yeah, to so nothing's changing as far as that goes. But now as we scoot past, notice that I'm gonna land right over that seam. Bam. Again, Emerald. <laughs> I don't, yeah, man, I haven't watched that show since like Look at that. 2002. Look at that, what are we, an eighth of an inch at best off? So I went ahead and laid out my, all of my plates 16 foot I'm just gonna restart the layout at each one anyway. So center marks are the same as side marks. Remember, when it comes to framing, we have acceptable tolerances. So frequently on social media, people get a little peeved because how are you supposed to align your stud perfectly to the center mark? My response to that is, if you can back out of a parking spot using only your mirrors, I have confidence that you can center a stud on a center mark, okay? And, and seriously, I was taught how to do this at like 14. So you can do it. If Big T could do it, you could do it. Burn five and a half, center 21 and a 16th. Circling back to why I like to go center marks on my top and bottom plates. Here's the reason why. 
we sheathe our walls before we raise them, square the wall since they're identical top plates, then square to a level floor means we'll have plumb walls. Anyway, I want the center of my panel to be over the center of my stud and the center marks just help me to keep the panel aligned. So where I'm starting at the bottom, I'm burning a certain amount because I'm gonna catch the rim. I'm right on that layout mark. Because my wall is square and all those marks were made, you just saw that, right, with the layout stick, then if I pull the panel to the mark, the pencil mark, now I am dead center. And you can see the seam where I'm at, the seam on the left, on the floor, those centers go all the way up through. Now, one thing I wanna point out is because this is zip R6, that's one inch poly ISO foam, our engineer wants us to use three by studs at panel edges. I couldn't get three by studs, so we have four by, which is awesome. You can't really miss. <laughs> so there's the principle. It's still half the thickness of that four by stud. And there we go. One last thing on layout. Obviously in the basement, that's really going to, in this case, that's going to determine the layout for everything else. I have to stack my joists over the studs, my studs over the joists, and then my rafters over the studs. <laughs> so you can see that here. All of our four by eight panels, we're stacking uh, center to center on those rafters, which then align with the studs. So for example, notice the cutouts at the top of that wall. Those are all of our rafters. Lo and behold, they land right over the studs, which lo and behold, land right over the joists, then right over the studs there in the basement. Okay, so again, kind of a back to basics. Center stays consistent all the way up. Even as materials change, the centers do not. Incidentally, this was a 64 foot wall with the soffits attached. The zip bar is going to hang up to catch the bird blocks. We just built it and lifted up, got it out of the way so that we could work on some other rake walls. So stay tuned for that. Thank you everybody for uh, following along. I truly appreciate it. If you don't mind, hit that thumbs up and leave a comment below. Is there any other topic similar to this that you'd like me to try to go over? We're currently framing a house and we're forming footings on the next house. So we got lots of time coming up over the next few months to hit framing topics. So let me know down below, what should I cover? Um, or just give me a ton of compliments. I mean, whatever you wanna do, but we'll see you in the next video.